guys, and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, your resident thinker, the one that's all about mechanics. I love myself some <laughs> thinky, hardcore, crunchy Euros. And this is my wonderful better half, Maggie. And she likes to come along on this Euro journey, but is looking for the story, the theme, um, and mm. the narrative. And so good luck to you because a lot of Euros are pretty dry. Yeah, well, it's that's part of the exciting <laughs> journey uh, that is my own exploration into yeah euro games and, and that's why it's like a diamond in the rough when you do find that perfect combination of both today we're reviewing a game by alexander fister by games up and capstone games um, and it's called maracaibo and um this is a i guess a spiritual sequel to great western trail which is a game we absolutely love yes. we've done a, re a re review of that like quite early on to in our yes. channel so i don't know if you want to go back and watch that <laughs> i don't know if we've found our i don't know yeah, if we've found groove our yet. groove yet um, i don't know if we still have found our groove yet <laughs> we're getting there it's a um, groove in progress a groove in, in development progress. Uh, but uh, before we get started with our review, so usually we break games down by their themes and then the mechanics and then we talk about our overall opinion of the game. We probably want to just clear the air and talk about the actual theme of this game in a bit of detail up front. Because yeah. when I purchased this game, it's been on my wish list for a long time. It's Alexander Pfister, who we've always admired as a designer. And, um, you know, so I just bought it kind of not knowing what it was about. And then we started to read it into the rule book. Yeah, I was actually really excited because I'm actually from the Caribbean, from South America. And I was like, well, okay, well, that's like where I'm from. Like, that's not exactly, but pretty close. Pretty close. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is fantastic. And then we got the, the game and then I sort of started setting it up, looking into going, oh, this is a little bit. Uh. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not really into theme that much. But as Maggie was explaining what it was about, especially having that kind of personal experience of it being where she's from um it, it came across a little prob like okay, problematic quite, quite yes, problematic at the moment it's quite from, problematic. yeah i mean it's always been problematic particularly so now that we're much more aware of yeah all of the issues and the impact that a lot of these things have yes but i, I should probably say what the theme is mm -hmm. so in in maracaibo we all play seafarers or explorers uh, in the 17th century in the caribbean so at that time you have all these different european um governments or or yeah the countries so we've got england france and spain trying to vie for what what areas they're going to conquer and what lands they're going to invade <laughs> and so what you're doing is you're trying to pull all these different levers and kind of hustle your way through uh, you might align yourself with one of these nations but really you're kind of playing them all a little bit and you're just doing different things to get you glory get your name in the uh, books of great explorers and seafarers or pirates and you're kind of rondelling your way around the Caribbean. So around the islands, around- Are you talking um, about mechanic? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just like in real life, I imagine uh, in the 17th century, you could only go one direction one with direction. your boats. <laughs> and then when everybody reached uh, the final point, every, every, every boat resets to Havana. It's um, the way it And that's the way it played out. But, yeah. but actually real talk, um, the, the theme is pretty problematic from our perspective. I mean, at first we were like, okay, you know, historical recount, that's fine. But it doesn't really feel good to have the objective of putting flags into yeah. different cities um, and kind of taking them over with, yep. a, with a foreign country. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that what adds to that is the fact that um, all of the, n none of the indigenous communities or um, really native yeah. were really well represented in this game. Um, and that was the first thing as I was going through the through the box and the rule. You did that's the first like, thing you said to me. There's only white people here. Yeah. There was like one native card and that's it. Like this is not representative at all. Yeah. Of, yeah. And and I think what and we won't go on about this forever, yeah. obviously, but the the other thing is that um, I feel like Sometimes there are there are war games and there are things that um, are designed to kind of enlighten people about mm -hmm. history and yep. what happened. And I, I think that you could go some way to explain away some of these events as historical events. But the, the problem that I really have is when Alexander Pfister was questioned about the theme by some people who found it quite offensive, um, his response was that you should think of it like Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm. And to me that, uh, like, I just wish there was a 
better answer than that because it doesn't feel like Pirates of the Caribbean mm, no. at all. It's not yeah. really fantasy. It's about combat. It's about exploration. And um, but anyway, there there is an expansion apparently due out in 2021 um, this year. And he has said that he is going to try and rectify some of these issues with the game. But we wanted to put that out there up front that this theme doesn't really sit well with us. Yeah. There is an acknowledgement in the rule book uh, about obviously the, the, the horrors that happen at this time and in this world. Having said that, it's, it's quite yeah. a small paragraph okay. and like the smallest font of the entire rule book. And it's like, after the credits uh, at the very, very final uh, page. So it's like, who even gets to that point? I had to really do some digging to yeah. get to that. So it's kind of like, yeah, I can see how there were some attempts mm -hmm. at addressing the issues with this. But uh, for me, the, the, the biggest issue is that you are helping the invaders. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, um, it doesn't feel it's great. It's kind of glorifying a bit. But anyways, so yeah. that's probably enough from the and, and also, point of view. Just worse as well, because Maggie is literally from these cities, so hard. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on, because we want to evaluate this game for what it is, mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I'll talk about mechanics if you yes. talked about the theme. Yep. Um, enough, so essentially this game is a rondelle, and if you are familiar with Great Western Trail, you know that that was also a rondelle as you made a trip through to Kansas, um, and that was a deck builder. This is more of a tableau builder. Um, cards are still at the center of this game, um, but you also have this rondelle, and what's interesting about this one is uh, you are actually, as Maggie alluded to, all traveling around in one direction. You can only move up to seven steps at a time, but in fact, the whole game is only going around this rondelle four times. Yeah. And you can speed through as fast mm -hmm. as you like because the person who reaches the end of the rondelle ends that round for everybody. Yeah. And so that makes it nice and tense because everyone is trying to think about what they want to get done on this board, where they want to stop. But if someone jumps, races ahead like I did in one of the mm. games and made you very frustrated, yes. jumping ahead <laughs> and trying to get things done quickly, mm. um, it means that you are cutting off people's potentials potential action. So that makes it quite interactive um, and quite competitive. Uh, what else you're doing in the game? You do have a hand of cards, as I mentioned, and there's a lot of hand management going on and there are multi-use cards. And I have to say- Very hot right now. I feel like a lot of the games that we've been looking at multi -use recently have multi-use cards. Multi yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, to me, it's just incredible how these designers can come up with, you know, a balanced deck of cards that w works and is integrated with the rest of the game. It's just like, this is a brilliant example. If we focus on just the mechanics, I think that this is an, a, an exceptional game in terms of mechanics. The multi-use cards um, that are in your hand have a couple of different uses, as I mentioned. They Obviously, they all have a cost, so you're trying to get money so that you can pay to put these cards into your tableau. And some of them give you ongoing effects, as you might expect. So it gives you an additional plus one step that you can make on the exploration track. Mm. Um, it gives you additional combat power if you're doing a combat action. Um, or it gives you, um, uh, you can increase your income track or your victory point track, which also kind of gets triggered at the end of each round. Yeah. Um, the cards themselves are worth victory points at the end of the game. So there's those bonuses. But interestingly about this game, the cards are also the resources. So when you land on special tiles and you need to pay in resources, you need to have the right cards in your mm. hand. And that is really clever because then you are actually making a trade off between keeping the card in your hand and buying yep. it and putting it into your tableau for the ongoing action or using it, discarding it as mm. a resource to get a tile on the board or to mm. fulfill an order. Really, really, really clever. Yep. And I just, Mm, I just feel like that it's so well integrated. Maggie and I had a few arguments about Lots this along arguments the way, about, yeah. um, but I felt like the mechanics there were brilliantly um, kind of connected. Um, the one part of the board that didn't make a lot of sense to me to begin with, the more we played it, the more it started to make more sense, I still think it's really like its own separate game, is this combat section of the board up the top here. And as Maggie mentioned, you can align yourself with um, three different countries. And when you do so, you remove one of their um, cubes and you place it onto a different city along the, uh, around the board, which gives Ownership you... Ownership markers. Ownership. Well... <laughs> 
but <laughs> it's just really bothers me. Um, so you can put an ownership marker on a city um, and when you do that, it will give you some bonuses. But also the main point about this top track is it's a multiplier victory points at the end of the game. Mm. So we look at which country has the most influence on the board at the end of the game gets more points and that gets multiplied by however much influence you have with that country. And actually we learned pretty, pretty soon into a few games. Mm. Um, this game, actually we wanted to review this sooner, but there was so much to explore in this game that we just kept playing it every day and we would we would use a different strategy. We've played it at two players and we've played it at three players. Maggie's also played it at solo, which we'll talk about. And each time we challenged ourselves to use a different part of the board and try and maximize our score. And we have found that that does contribute significantly yeah, substantial yeah. victory points that yeah. come in at the end and so often you can't really you don't see, even know who's yeah as you're going through who's, who's gonna, gonna win yeah. yeah go have a runaway uh, at lead yeah, yeah so so there's the ownership and there's the rondelle but there's also this other little bonus game at the bottom which is your explorer track and as you make your way along this you get lots of victory points if you can reach the end but you also get bonuses along the way but what we found is because you only go around this rondelle four times you really have to focus on one or two different things um, there's lots of other things going on here you also have a career which mm -hmm. gives you points um, and unlocks kind of workers along the way not at workers, assistants. Yep, assistants. Uh, assistants yes. along the way. Um, and then I haven't even spoken about the player board, but the player yeah, board looks ship. very much the sh Is this a ship? Yeah, that's, oh, your, yeah, ship. that's your ship. So those are upgrades. <laughs> I'm just like your player board. <laughs> um, but your player board uh, ship <laughs> has, is just like Great Western Trail in that as you are removing these little um, discs, they are kind of un uncover a new power or ability or a one-off bonus and the more you can do that obviously you can kind of scale up your your ship your production mm -hmm. your combat power all different things so the one thing that is super annoying about this game is just so precarious balancing all of this is ridiculous they, yeah you have two small discs balancing on top of each other on top of a very flat uh, cardboard that can be quite slippery. So any little bump off the table and a lot of these uh, discs are gonna go flying everywhere. Yeah, super and annoying. And it's just like a chase the dog because he's about to eat a disc and then we'll never get it back or I won't yeah. want to fish it back out. Yeah, there were a number of times that our dog like bumped the table and stuff just went everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, long live the kind of double layered board. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Or some um, kind of, I know that there, I think there's an overlay, the, there's overlay, uh, not inserts, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Um, anyway, I think that is basically the crux of the game. Ultimately, it is whoever has the most victory points wins. Um, Should we also talk about the story mode? Oh, the story mode. trying to integrate mode. as well. Yeah. Uh, and legacy, yeah. like the legacy tiles. Yeah. Yeah. They so Alexander Fister. Um, like I think this is a good idea. Um, he's yeah. trying to. I applaud the effort. Yeah, the effort to take a dry euro and um, put in a narrative so that it's not a legacy game. I wouldn't call it a legacy game, but it is um, a story that kind of changes in chapters and changes the board state a little bit. It adds in these, these tiles as you go and you can kind of choose if you want to fulfill the story objective to then move it along and move mm. to the next page. Uh, did not work for me. No. I, I said I applaud the effort. I said I applaud the intention, the effort and execution it still didn't quite kind of yeah. come together. I mean, yeah. the story, like it started off, I don't know, I don't even remember. It was like talking about the plague yes. and I just was so not interested because the other, because I think one of the reasons why it doesn't work as well as it should is because this is such a heavy game. Yes. And and you're so focused on getting that neck, optimizing that next rondelle. There's so many turn. levers to, yeah. in terms of victory points and how everything is integrated from yeah. that point. But yeah, and there's like, so much to think about yeah. that it's like, I really could not care less about this narrative that's going on. I mean, the choice of whether to do the objective or not always came down to me as, is it worth it for the bonus? Nothing mm. to do with, can I help some lady with something? Yeah, the story, the story ended up being not very immersive to the point like when I asked, because we played with your sister as mm. well, and, and when I kind of talked about it, she was like, oh, I kind of tuned out as soon as you were reading the card. Cause it's like, <laughs> yeah, because like, I was well, focused on my strategy. Yeah, and I'm like trying to like yeah. grasp at some sort of thing, because that, that, part of the theme wasn't as problematic as it's just like it's about a play oh well, actually i shouldn't give too many spoilers yeah that's probably the first thing so you're just kind of trying that's to pretty like, early on though yeah very yeah. that's like the first 
first uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, but I think one thing that I really did like about it is the fact that it came with all these tiles that go on top of the board that change um, the areas where you can stop and the actions that you can do at each of those cities. And that is really cool because that just adds variability to the game. Mm, and I yeah. almost like, I want to like get rid of the story but just add in a couple of random yeah different time, tiles yeah. Yeah. yeah every time i play because then it at least mixes it up a little bit mm. um yeah but in terms of the gameplay I like, talk about, well i talk about thematic integration mm. so um weirdly thankfully <laughs> the thematic integration doesn't actually come through the theme doesn't really come through um which is good because it meant that i could actually just not think about it and mm. just relax into well let's just think think mechanics like but, just, yeah that, sorry i didn't want to interrupt you but that i think it was the same experience for me because maggie yeah. had told me what it was about and how it was like actually impacting on her and that made me sad and kind of not warm towards the game yeah and then i think we both played and i was like oh how could people ignore this theme and then yeah. you get two plays in and you're like i've forgotten what mm. the theme <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> so so for me there's two things one it's the the overall theme doesn't really come through but then even when you're playing and i've said this before like i know a theme is very well integrated based on how quickly i can pick it up because mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah these actions make sense the things that the way that um something triggers something else it took me like three games to really wrap my head around this and i only really started like enjoying myself in the mechanics from game four because even the even though like the interconnectedness of the different mechanics and how you get the points uh it works from a victory point point of view it makes no thematic sense even even if you take out the problematic side of the theme even if it's just like imagine you're just pirates and you're just you know you're doing this for combat the combat doesn't really make um, a lot of sense it's just cubes it, I, I sort of feel like it's sort of devolved back into colored cubes and kind of points for the sake of points mm. um something like if i were to compare it to great western trail i actually still felt like I, it's one of my favorite games um, mm. great western trail because it does feel like you've got your cows you've got you're moving through kansas the interconnectedness of the um the craftsmen uh, and your engineers and your cowboys all of that makes sense mm. all of here, their roles make here sense. is just like it's just a whole bunch of different mechanics that i had to or different puzzles that i had to abstractly wrap my head around and, and this is the part where we were arguing a lot mm. actually because in our first few games i was like i think because i'm just focused on the mechanics i was like this is amazing like the way that they've been integrated in these cards and with everything on the board is just like mind-blowing to me that someone could do that um and but for Maggie, me, I was like, this is not at Maggie all coming like, together This is me. just like a whole bunch of stuff this thrown into a, a bag. <laughs> yeah, this is just that whole bunch of mechanics. And, and yes, they are, they do work together. It's not like they're, because yeah. I kept saying disjoint, disjointed, like it just yeah. feels disjointed. And I kept saying disjointed mm. thematically, yes. not mechanically. Yes. So and that we, is correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, but we resolved our issues because, because I, we kind of kept playing and kept playing and then you kind of got the integration of the mechanics and, yeah. Um, and then it was like a really tight race. It's been a really quite a tight race every yeah. time that we've played. Yeah. Even when we've been using different strategies. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I still would say that um, this doesn't replace um, Great Western Trail because I know that's one of the things that people have said. It's like, this is like, you know, Great Western Trail plus plus. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like it probably is in terms of the, the as I, I keep saying, the levers that you're pulling and mm -hmm. all of that interconnect. But as a gaming experience, I still enjoy that more than this. Um, I, yeah. yeah. I, well... Yeah, look, I, I think I, I don't love theme, but I with Great Western Trail, I completely agree that you it's heavy, but you almost forget how heavy it is because the yeah. theme helps you along. It feels and, logical yeah, as you're and, playing. And yeah. I wouldn't want to necessarily teach this to many people because it is, it's quite heavy. The iconography is a lot to take in. Mm. Um, and like we found ourselves going back to the rule book time yeah, and time again times, to yeah. like try and find out what things meant. And, and it took a little while to and get it. To me, it sort of says that it's not intuitive. It's not an intuitive game. It's something that takes a while to kind of understand how they work, how yeah. things work. Yeah, yeah. but I, I really do, if you haven't got this already, I really do appreciate the mechanical design here. Um, I love I love a rondelle, mm -hmm. which everybody knows, um, but the idea of like ending everybody's turn at the end of the rondelle is so mean. That I is just love it. painful, but I get it. And it's like, it's one of those <laughs> things that it's like, because I, I actually love taking my time and exploring something. And you don't get to do that if you've got one person person and that gaming group that's like I'm just gonna speed through and it's like ah. and so I was I was thinking 
I, I didn't know. win in that game though, to be fair. No, your sister just like yeah. completely annihilated yeah, us. Yeah, annihilated us. For me, I, I think that the, at first I thought it wasn't as tight and competitive as Great Western Trail. Now that we've played it quite a few times, I, once everybody understands the different parts of the puzzle, the different things that you can focus on, the way that it works with your career, your cards, your board, once everyone knows that, this is deeply competitive. It's tough. It's tough mm. to get everything done that you want to get done. And I really enjoyed it from a pure optimization and race perspective. I think mm. that it's, it's just one of those, if you love a competitive game, I also want to say that this, this game plays so well at two. It does, yeah. At two. And like lots of people are looking for lower play account games. We get asked about that a lot, mm. uh, especially at the moment. And um, this one, if, you, if you're after a big box experience that works at two, this one certainly does yeah. that. When we played it at three, it wasn't that different to our two player yeah. experience and actually the two player game had less downtime yep, I so it was more, actually yeah. a bit faster and you got to you know get to your back to your turn a bit quicker so mm. um yeah i really enjoyed this at two i mechanically i think it's brilliant thematically i'm not thrilled about it um but yeah for, for me i just if i can overlook the theme um which is tricky mm. um the the mechanics is again just another brilliant Alexander Fister design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it's um, now that I've played it quite a number of times, I feel like I can, I can appreciate the mechanics and I can sort of get into that uh, a little bit more and just kind of like enjoy the puzzle. And, and because, yeah, the theme doesn't actually come through as well, un un unless you get one of those like unfortunate cards that is like... Like Conquer Village. Awkward. No, it's not great. Um, so aside from that, most of the time it's just like, you know, you've got like pirates and like nameless kind of seafarers and uh, mm. explorers so I, I can I sort of feel like I can I can enjoy it from that point it's not at all an immersive experience uh, thematically speaking I don't feel like I'm in this world I don't feel like I'm doing the things that I would be like a, like when I'm doing combat it's very much just like a numbers game there's no real downside there's no there's no risk really mm. like if you, you can go into combat like there should be some kind of risk of like to your life or your well-being or your no nah, it's just like well whoever's got more power or to your or, like, soul uh, yeah well you know theme again <laughs> um but but uh yeah so is it something that i'm looking forward to playing more and more for me personally no um how because is this you haven't spoken about your solo experience all right, so let's talk about the solo experience. So with the solo experience, uh, I've played it at different levels of the difficulty. It's an interesting, I tend to not love when the solo is an AI. In this case, the AI, particularly as you go high on the difficulty levels, it is like that player that is just speeding through <laughs> and like just triggering end of round uh, very quickly. So that is annoying because one of the things that I love particularly when I'm playing solo is to I get to now explore the game at my own speed and see all the possibilities mm -hmm. and all the things that I can accomplish whereas if you've got uh, an AI that's speeding through or again an like or an Amy that's speeding through is just like ah it's it's a desperate grasp at what can I do to you know get as many victory points to save my neck um, mm. So yeah, so with the with the the way it works is yeah you've got an AI deck and then there's different there's A cards B cards C cards and then with the depending on the level of difficulty you'll you'll be incorporating more of the B or C cards which just means that that AI is going to be moving faster and faster and has a little bit more power in general it has crazy catch-up mechanics at the end in terms of victory points it's like and, and things that i would keep forgetting it's like the, it, it can collect uh, quests along the way and then by the end it usually has quite a hefty little uh pile stack and it's like oh yeah it's five points per per quest and like <laughs> what and then it's like if, if it's got more quests than you it's an extra 10 points it's got if it's got you know x number more than you it's 20 or 30 points and you're like what is happening because like throughout the game you're like oh yeah we're kind of we're doing okay or like i'm pretty safe and then all of a sudden at the end it does this like crazy laps around the board that it's like oh you know one thing that i really did enjoy is i see online there's people doing challenges so it's like start with this set of um uh, with the deck with these cards um you start with these cards and so it's kind of like competing against each other going well with this exact set of um variables who can get the most points i really enjoy that as but again that's something that's more of like a, a community uh, uh approach to 
By the, the way, sword. that doesn't sound like a catch-up mechanic. That just sounds like the like AI it just was speeding destroyed me <laughs> without <laughs> yeah. at the very end without me realizing yeah. what yeah. was happening. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't see it along the way. It's just all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Surprise! Surprise! Yeah. There's a little VP I made at destroyed. the end. Yeah. Anyway. Will we be keeping this in our collection? We actually haven't discussed this yeah. until right now. This is awkward. You saw it here. <laughs> We're going to have it live. We're going to have this discussion live. Um, I would be moving it on because mm. of the, because just, you know, even though, yeah, you can kind of forget about the theme and all of that sort of stuff. I'm like, I still enjoy Great Western Trail more, even yeah. though I know that it's simpler game mechanics wise, but that's my yeah. take. I, I actually enjoyed it playing it with my sister, who's an engineer who's very, I would say, mechanics optimization mm -hmm. focused. Yeah. And um, her and I found like it was quite like tight and competitive with each other as we have been our whole lives. <laughs> um, so, so I really enjoyed it from that perspective. The theme really does bother me, especially because of Maggie and because of a, a lived experience of being from these places. I, I feel as though I want to wait and see what he does this year <laughs> yeah. to yeah, try yeah. and rectify it because mm. I, you know, often these things are not malicious. They are just yeah. um, and naive, naive, and and, and blind I, yeah. in sort of. Uh, yeah, and I'd like yeah. to see that he does. You know, given that it's now twenty twenty one, move on from these types mm. of themes, or at least do it in a way that is a bit more respectful to, um, you know, the people that are from these places. So yeah, um, I would love to, love to see because I did. I do like this concept of a legacy style Euro game. So mm. it's like, can we fix that story? Can we make that actually something that I am invested in? Yeah. And I want to find out what happens as opposed to, ah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's flavor text. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, you might like this if you like, I think this is heavier than Great Western Trail. Um, yes, it probably is on BGG, I would imagine. It's, um, it's a lot to take in. It does take, like, you're not going to get it in your first or second game. Mm. You need to play it a few times yeah. before everything starts to make sense. If you have a partner or someone at home that's willing to do those hard yards with mm. you, then it is quite rewarding in, in terms of a competitive, um, very well designed mechanically. Euro. Um, but anyway, that's our review, our interesting uh, review, first review of mm, 2021 yeah. of Maracaibo. Um, please let us know if you play this game, what you think of it. Um, you know, uh, he's got another game coming out, um, Cloud Age, which we have pre-ordered. So looking forward to getting that one onto the table and reviewing that one. Um, but otherwise, we will be back soon with more reviews. Please hit the like, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when we add other videos. Um, but otherwise, bye for now. Bye.